soon see some major developments in a story that we've been following closely since February of 2022. We call it the boy in the box case. The Jupiter mother accused of child abuse and false imprisonment. Tracy Ferreter now heading to court for a pretrial hearing and a plea bargain could be on the table. Luba. Yeah, that's right, Jim. And right now you may remember Tracy's husband who also charged in this case. A couple opted to try to be tried separately. Now, Tim Ferreter was also found guilty last year. He is currently serving his five year sentence. Let's bring in our I team chief investigator, Mike Magnoli. He has an I team extra for us tonight. And Mike, what do you know about Monday's court date? Good evening, Luli. Well, it's a plea conference. Tracy Ferreter says she's not guilty, but will she want to take her chances with a jury? There's about a month left before the trial and at any point between now and then, the state or the defense could initiate a deal. If that doesn't happen, a new expert witness will take the stand. All right, Mr. Bushy, has the uh, jury reached a verdict in this matter? That verdict was guilty on all counts. It was back in November when Jupiter father Tim Ferreter and his defense team went through a two-week trial. They wanted to convince a Palm Beach County jury that the Ferreter's decisions and their actions were flawed but not illegal. Jurors didn't see it that way. The Ferreters, Tim and Tracy, found themselves in legal trouble two years ago when police discovered this structure in their garage. No windows, a door that locked from the outside, a bucket for a bathroom. This is where the Ferreters confined their adopted teenage son when he was acting out. The boy was kept in here for long periods of time, alone in the dark. But the Ferreters said he suffered from a condition called reactive attachment disorder. And they said they were at their wits end trying to deal with his violent tendencies. The mom, Tracy Ferreter, is now facing her own trial. In the latest round of defense motions, Tracy Ferreter's attorney formally introduces a new doctor who will be called upon as an expert witness. He'll be questioned about the disorder and the struggles that adoptive parents have controlling it. Mind you, Tracy has a different lawyer than her husband. So, with a change at the defense table and on the stand, perhaps the outcome won't be the same in trial too. But the time to plea bargain is now. Having sat in the first trial and the sentencing, the I-team saw how that first expert witness did. On cross-examination, the prosecution didn't have a lot of questions about the symptoms of reactive attachment disorder. They wanted to know about treatment, and the expert testified she would never recommend what the Ferreters resorted to. Not only was it harmful, but none of the ways in which they addressed him or he was treated would be useful as constructive punishment, correct? Right, no. Dr. Jerome Polyakov, expert in child and family psychology, isn't on the Ferreter case, but I've talked with him about reactive attachment disorder before. Let's role play here for a second. Sure. Okay. I'm the prosecution and you're on the stand as an expert witness. Are there any circumstances, is there any scenario you can imagine where as a professional, you would advise somebody to treat reactive attachment disorder with extreme isolation? Put the kid in a room and lock him up there. I can't imagine. I, it's incomprehensible to me. It, it reminds me of the movie and the play Marat Saad. Right, in which in the 1800s, people were locked up in straitjackets, and when they started to howl, were doused with cold water and left to rot in their own excrement. Right, that's not uh, how we fix problems in this century. All right, I reached out to Tracy Ferreter's attorney to ask about Monday. Any insight into what's coming? Didn't hear back from Mark Shiner before news time. I'm Mike Magnoli, CBS 12 News.